Yeah, yeah. Back again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yo. Years ago, I don't know if I mentioned it in a YouTube video or I definitely mentioned it on like Facebook and other social media entities. So, I'm going to run it back. There are Ghana symbols like Sankofa, like Jinyame, like they're called Andinkra symbols. Now, the physicists also use this word. They call it Adinkra, or I believe they also call it Andinkra, but definitely Adinkra. And what Adinkra are, are the smallest fundamental particles of the universe. They interlock and combine to form basic particles that become your protons, your electrons, your neutrons. But like you got these quarks and these all of these weak forces and strong forces that the physicists are trying to figure out. First of all, let's go to the root. Let us go to the root. The root is God, almighty God, the supreme personality of Godhead, Bhagawan, Sri Krishna. And he spoke to Arjuna. Arjuna was like, I think it's the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna was like, please tell me about your mystic potencies and your powers and how they work in this universe. And you know what Krishna told him? Yes, I will speak to you about my great mystical potencies and powers. That's so so funny. Like somebody says to you, yo, man, tell me how great you are. And then you say, yes, I will tell you how great I am. So Krishna said, yes, 11th chapter. This is in the chapter of the universal form. And if it's not the 11th chapter, it's the 10th chapter. Because I believe in 10th chapter, verse 34, I believe that's where he mentions that death I am, time I am. Destroyer of all worlds. We just saw Oppenheimer for my girlfriend's birthday on August 5th. And he was quoting the Bhagavad Gita. And like I always say to people, that ancient Sanskrit knowledge in those ancient texts, the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Purana, all of the Puranas and stuff like that. If you utilize that stuff in a negative way, you can make bombs that could destroy the whole world. So imagine if you use the Sanskrit scriptures for what they were really intended for. How far could you really go in life? And I don't mean in murdering. I mean in life spiritually. But let's put this all together. So Krishna told Arjuna, yes, I will speak to you about my mystical, op mystical op opulences, but only of those which are most prominent because my potencies and opulences, oh, Arjuna, are unlimited. So what's going on with these scientists right now? They're not following the path of Kabbalah. Kabbalah is the word that means kibble. It means to receive. They are not walking the path of descending knowledge. They are walking the path of ascending knowledge. What's the difference? Descending knowledge is that which you receive from the higher force. And the ascending knowledge is when you're climbing steps. These scientists are climbing steps. And they're going to the most fundamental. So what's going to happen? It's going to take them 10 trillion times quadrillion years to figure out 1 90th of the information that's out there in the universe. The data in the universe, these scientists are far off, but they're making little discoveries. But it's going to take them forever because they do not use Shabda Brahma. Shabda Brahma is the sound vibration of the supreme Brahman that comes from the origin of the universe, the creation and before the creation of the universe. Bhagawan Sri Krishna's vibration inspired all all of the Brahmas in the multiverses to create the universe with this sound Shabda Brahma and Shabda Brahma has already been proven so when you get the Vedic knowledge the knowledge is already fact it's up to the scientists to catch up which is what they're trying to do why am I saying this and how does this tie into Andinkras Andinkras are some of these mystical opulence potencies energies of Krishna's not the greatest ones that Krishna was describing in the Bhagavad Gita, but the small ones. So they're going, instead of studying the whole tree, the scientists are studying leaf by leaf by leaf. And it just takes a long time on the path of ascending knowledge. It's just like the difference between a baby tiger and a baby monkey. The baby tiger is on the path of descending knowledge, receiving knowledge from the mom, whereas the baby monkey is ascending. What do I mean? 
when it comes to yoga, you can go very far with yoga, up to the gates of the spiritual world. But you can't break through to the spiritual world with these regular forms of yoga, except through bhakti. But let's deal with regular yoga. Regular yoga is dealing with your own strength, your, your own meditation, your own body um, perturbances, how you twist your body up and how you hold your breath and how you breathe and how you eat. All of these are processes by which we can become more enlightened, not ultimately enlightened, but more enlightened. So that's the path of ascending knowledge where you're walking hard. The baby monkey holds on to its mother. And if the baby monkey gets weak, it falls down. The baby tiger, although its mother has very sharp teeth, those same sharp teeth hold on to the baby with love. And the baby has faith and confidence that its mother will never let it go. Same thing with the path of ascending and descending knowledge. Ascending knowledge is very hard. You got to walk up them steps. And that's what the scientists are doing. But I congratulate them because today they made a very important discovery in the realm of quantum physics pertaining to quantum entanglement. And remember the Adinkra symbols that the Africans use out of Ghana. These are the fundamental particles of the universe. If you put those Adinkra symbols together, they form the smallest components of the universe. And it ties into Anansi the spider. Anansi the spider is the wielder of the cosmic web. All of the energies that create our universe is in Anansi the spider's web. The trickster. Anansi spider. So with the Adinkras now, scientists found, finally observed quantum entanglement they took light photons put them in a quantumly entangled state and finally took a picture of it and guess what the picture came out to be look it up quantum entanglement photos the picture of quantum entanglement is the yin and the yang symbol you know the yin yang symbol so that's the positive and negative right and quantum entanglement is the exact opposite your universal counterpart is out there. This tree, its universal counterpart is out there. It's the exact opposite, but exact equal to that particle. When we are talking about entanglement, we are talking about attachment. Because the things that make us happy is the same things that make us sad. This happiness and sadness is right there in the quantum symbol called yin and yang. So when you see these ancient Asians, Africans, Europeans, Indians, all of them have these little symbols and stuff. It's so much deeper. And now scientists is about to start unlocking all of these different symbols. And we are about to go into some amazing times. I don't know if it's good or bad. I just know we're about to make some amazing discoveries. However, the sincere students of the Vedas, the learned students, the Panditas, not the Mandita. Mandita is, yeah, uh, what? They used to use the word retarded, but that's politically incorrect. So Mandita is like, what do they say? Alpa Sumedha. They have a lack of good brain substance. But we're not dealing with Mandita. We're dealing with Pandita. Those who are learned already know about quantum entanglement. They already know about the multiverse. It's already spoken of in the Vedic scriptures. But continue on, scientists and students of science, and learn, because eventually it will bring you to Krishna. It might take 75 trillion lifetimes, but you will get back home, because now you're on the path. Once you're on Krishna's path, he don't let you off so easy. So I just wanted to say that the symbol for quantum entanglement is yin and yang, and now I understand more why Krishna is talking about, in the Bhagavad Gita, he's talking about don't be like, don't reject and don't accept don't don't like he's trying to say uh be centered be transcendental don't be left don't be right even krishna manifested halfway through the new moon and the full moon showing you that krishna is not a fanatic he's more centered you know what i'm saying and humans try to live your life more centered don't be too attached that attachment to good 
and that repulsion from bad is an example of quantum entanglement. And the way of the path, the path of the scriptures is trying to teach us how to get out of this temporary entanglement. I hope that somebody can get something good from this video and anybody watching be blessed eternally seven times, seven times, seven times, seven. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Boom!